Welcome to the e-commerce badassery podcast, the place for scrappy female entrepreneurs who want to learn actionable steps and strategies to grow the traffic, sales, and profit in your e-commerce business. I'm your host, Jessica Totillo Coster, a 20-year retail veteran who spent three years as the only employee of a seven-figure online store. That shit was crazy. I know exactly how it feels to do all the things, and I'm sharing everything I learned the hard way so you don't have to. I may have started this business by accident, but supporting badass bosses like you lights me the fuck up, and I am so stoked to see you grow. Are you ready, babe? Let's roll. Welcome back to the e-commerce badassery podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Totillo Coster. It's that time of year again. Shopify Editions Winter 2024 went live on January 31st, which brings 100 plus updates for the Shopify platform to streamline your operations and marketing. We're going to go through some of the biggest highlights here together, but make sure you check the show notes for additional resources and to learn more about what was released. Before we get into the details of the announcements they made, let's go back to their summer 2023 event. At that event, they announced the release of the Shopify subscription app. At the time, they were taking early access signups, but it wasn't released to all merchants. Well, good news, Shopify subscriptions has been officially rolled out worldwide. I was able to play around with the app a bit, and while it's super basic, it's the perfect app for anyone who wants to add a subscription option to their store without having to pay for an additional app. This will let you offer products on a recurring basis. They give you weekly and monthly intervals, and you can offer a discount for those subscriptions as well. It works seamlessly with customer accounts, so users can pause, skip, and cancel their subscription on their own too. It can't do fancy things like auto-switching from an initial kit product to the replenishment product or give the ability to add on individual products before their next shipment but it's an easy way to get started and it doesn't cost you anything. All right, so let's get into the new announcements that were just released. These first few features are Shopify Plus exclusives. I do recommend you listen, even if you're not on Shopify Plus, because I'll be sharing alternatives for these if you feel they're important for your business. As far as whether or not you should be on Shopify Plus, we're not going to get into that conversation today. But Typically, it just comes down to your sales volume and your feature needs. There are a handful of features that are exclusive to Shopify Plus, but the additional cost generally isn't worth it unless the reduction in payment processing and shipping fees and or app replacement can pay the difference in the monthly cost for you or if you really need those Shopify Plus exclusive features to run your business successfully. So the first update is on-site search. The search engine on Shopify Plus has gotten an upgrade with semantic search. I know it sounds fancy, but essentially it just means that Shopify search algorithm can understand the meaning of words and phrases. Instead of having to match an exact query in a product title or description, if a consumer were to type a phrase like something warm to wear in winter, Shopify will be able to serve up the right products. While I know this sounds cool and you might be getting a bit of FOMO here, it's unlikely your customers are searching your website this way. Before you start thinking about upgrading for this feature alone, go check the search report for your store. If you do happen to see a lot of on-site searches with natural language and you think you might be missing out, There are third-party apps that can do this for you that will be cheaper than upgrading to Shopify Plus. The next big update, which is also Shopify Plus exclusive, is combined product listings. These allow you to create each one of your product variants as an individual item in Shopify with its own unique URL, images, page content, etc. And then You use the app to combine it with the other variants to present it as one listing. So on the front end of your website, it's going to look the same. The consumer is going to go to the product page. They're going to have swatches of all the different colors that it comes in. They're going to click on the swatch and it's going to take them to the new product page, which lives on a different URL because it's technically a different product. 
Now, this is super helpful when you want to have multiple images for each variant because it reduces clutter on the product page. It lets you create SEO friendly URLs. So you could have t shirt with the color listed in the URL versus just a generic t shirt. And you can customize the listing to each variant. What I think is the most powerful, though, is that when all of your variants are listed separately, it allows you to manage publishing at the individual variant level. So if you were to retire a particular variant, you could just unpublish that item without having to delete it. Whereas when it's listed as a traditional variant, if you don't want that to show forever as sold out on your product page, you would have to delete that variant to be able to remove it. This could also come in handy if you're pushing your product listings to other platforms and maybe you only want certain colors to get pushed over to Amazon or Etsy or wherever you're sending your product because it is controlled at the product level. If this feature is giving you FOMO, good news, you don't actually need Shopify Plus to do this. While they're making it a lot easier and more seamless to accomplish with their combined listings app, you can do this on non-Shopify Plus stores with something called Siblings. The general process is the same. You create all of your variants as individual items and then the Sibling product presents it as one product to the customer on the front end. The main difference is that instead of using an app, you're using Metafields and or collections to tell the theme which products should be combined as siblings. The other requirement is that your theme has to be coded in order to render the siblings. There are a handful of newer Shopify 2.0 themes that have siblings built in. I'll link those in the show notes, but it can also be custom coded if needed. There were a handful of other Shopify Plus exclusive updates, such as upgrades to Shopify audiences, automatically capturing payments with each fulfillment, which is great if you're often shipping orders in smaller batches, and more checkout extensions. These checkout extensions are essentially a number of new APIs for Shopify Plus checkout that gives developers the ability to expand the functionality without losing compatibility with standard Shopify features like ShopPay. While I don't necessarily recommend custom checkout development, Shopify Plus stores can expect to see new features rolling out from their favorite apps. If you have done custom development in the past with Checkout Liquid, you have until August to switch to the new structure before you lose your changes, so make sure to book that update with your development team. And if you use Shopify's built-in B2B functionality for your wholesale partners, there were a lot of updates around this too, so make sure you take a deeper dive. Speaking of developer updates, while there were a lot of them, the one I'm most excited about and expect to have the biggest impact on individual merchants is the updated product discount API. Native discounts on Shopify have always been a point of contention for me, and one of the main reasons being on Shopify Plus was so important to us at my previous day job was because of discount scripts, which gave a lot more flexibility in the types of discounts I could run, such as buy more, save more, only using one discount code. The updated API now gives the ability for one discount to have multiple effects on a cart. So while this doesn't mean much on its own for merchants, it does give app developers more flexibility in what they can create. And fingers crossed that we see some new functionalities pop up in the App Store. Shopify is also making big updates to the product creation and organization process. From an updated category taxonomy to increasing the available variants, in their words, they're making the biggest update to their products that they have in a decade. Shopify hinted at an increase in the number of variants per product in the summer 2023 release, but this January, they gave us the D. At the moment, the maximum number of variants you can have on any one product is 100, but moving forward, that limit is going to increase to 2,000. Let me just say, if you need 2,000 variants on your product, you can probably like split them up a different way. Just saying. But because this update affects a lot of their app developers, they're giving them a year to make the necessary changes and expect to fully roll this out 
in 2025. So it's going to be a minute before we see this. If you're one of the merchants who has been using an app to get around those variant limitations, just hang on a little bit longer. So as I mentioned, they're also introducing a new product category taxonomy, and this is going to go five levels deep. This also comes with built-in recommended attributes that will be automatically created through meta fields when you create the product. So I know this is all sounding like gibberish. For example, let's say you sell snowboards. The new category taxonomy will be sporting goods, outdoor recreation, winter sports and activities, skiing and snowboarding, snowboards. So that's the category. Now, if you're an apparel retailer, when you add a new t-shirt to your store, you're going to see attributes such as color, size, and material get automatically created. You'll also be able to set the hex codes for your colors, and then all of these fields can be used to push additional data to other marketplace listings. Out of everything they announced, this is honestly one of my favorites because the lack of product data has always been a thorn in my side. And having access to meta fields in the admin and being able to manually create them has been helpful, but this has taken it to the next level. I know this one's a little bit harder to wrap your head around without a visual, so make sure you check the show notes for a link to a video walkthrough and it should bring it all together for you. At the time of this recording, these features are in early access, and if we consider it took them seven months to fully roll out Shopify subscriptions, it might be a while before we see this come to fruition, but it's exciting to see that it's coming soon. There were a couple of other merchandising updates, but I'm not super clear on the timeline for when they'll roll out. It was somewhat implied that it will be part of the Shopify Products 2.0 upgrade, but don't quote me on that. You might see them sooner. First is an updated variant listing card. This will make it easier to manage the details of your variants on the product page in your admin versus having to click into that separate page, that separate section. The second is a native feature to add color swatches to your product pages. Now, at this point, most themes already have this functionality available, but it's limited to working with existing CSS colors or manually uploading images to your assets folder to act as swatches. This new version will work from the meta field color attribute that will be automatically created when you assign categories to your products and you'll be able to set the hex code you want that swatch to be. So it's going to be a huge time saver moving forward. It will require some updates in how your product information is entered on the back end. And it's going to be a minute before you see this in action. So not only do you need Shopify 2.0 to be released and to update all of your information, but if you're using a non-Shopify developed theme, you need that theme developer to release a new version of their theme with the necessary code. Again, they didn't give us a definitive timeline on this, but if this could be a time saver for you and it's important for your business, you may just want to pencil in some time at the beginning of next year to plan for a theme upgrade and potentially updating your product data. Sure, it may be released sooner than that, but you know, at some point you're going to get too close to Q4 and I would not go through the trouble of doing all of this for something as simple as updated product swatches. Another exciting update, sort of related to products, is Shopify gift cards. Customers will now have the option to add a recipient, a custom greeting, and be able to schedule their gift cards to be sent at a later date. This is independent of your theme and should already be available on your store. There's a checkbox on the gift card product page that says, I want to send this as a gift. When the customer clicks that, it will open up the additional fields for them to fill out. There have also been several updates to Shopify developed apps, which is really nice to see because their own native apps are typically pretty bare bones. And while I don't ever expect them to be as robust as some of the paid apps available in the App Store, they would piss off a lot of their development partners, they have made some pretty cool updates. So first is Shopify Markets. This is an app that allows you to start cross-border selling all from one store. 
I'm not going to go into all the details of the app itself today. It's been around for a while. Check the show notes for links to learn more. But what I'm super excited about is the full rollout of Shopify Markets Pro. While Shopify Markets is a great tool, it still leaves a lot of the heavy lifting on you as the merchant to manage taxes and duties. This can get super complicated and for many merchants, not worth the hassle. Shopify Markets Pro, on the other hand, offers additional features that are powered by a platform called Global E. Now, when you use Shopify Markets Pro, Global E becomes the merchant of record, which means they handle all of the logistics of collecting and remitting any taxes and duties. With Shopify Markets Pro, you also get DHL e-commerce with USPS first mile delivery, which means you just have to get the package to USPS, they pass it off to DHL, who then delivers it to your international customer. There are, of course, limitations on who is eligible for Shopify Markets Pro, such as being located in the U.S., using Shopify payments, and limitations on the products that you can sell. For a full list of all the requirements and limitations, I will stick a link in the show notes. Shopify Marketplace Connect, which was released during the summer 2023 editions, is also getting an upgrade. This is the app that lets you sync your product listings with other marketplaces such as Amazon, Walmart, eBay, and Etsy. I'm excited to see these upgrades because after a couple of my clients tried it, we quickly realized for more complicated product and inventory configurations, it just didn't have the features they needed and they still had to go use a third-party app that they had to pay extra for. Now, the latest updates are not necessarily going to solve all of those same problems, but it is proof that Shopify is committed to creating a more robust solution, so I'm hopeful it will fit the bill for more merchants. The two releases they announced were auto-populated fields for Amazon apparel listings. That seems so specific, doesn't it? And the ability to select different regional inventory locations. As mentioned, it's not exactly an overhaul, but hey, it's a step in the right direction. Shopify Collective was also announced at the Summer 23 editions, and this is the app that lets you connect to other Shopify stores for dropshipping. Unlike most apps, this is not one that you can install from the app store and start selling on or pulling products from. There is a waitlist slash application process to be able to use it. I appreciate that Shopify is vetting merchants before they can become a supplier on the app since the retailers, anyone who is buying products from these suppliers, right, we have to rely on them to create a great customer experience. But I do wish it was easier to start using as a retailer. If you were to try and install it right now, it would more than likely put you on a wait list. But one of my clients said that a brand she buys from, who was already an approved supplier on the platform, was able to invite her. And so she kind of skipped the wait list and was able to start using the platform right away in order to list that supplier's products on her website. All of that to say, the two announcements Shopify made about the platform were Better search and filtering so retailers could find suppliers that they were looking for and synced reviews. If you're using one of the integrated review apps, it doesn't work with all of them. I'll stick a link in the show notes so you can see which ones are included. Your store's product reviews will now appear inside Shopify Collective if you're a supplier. And this should go a long way to converting potential dropshipping customers when they see how much your customers love your stuff. Speaking of synced reviews, these will also sync to the Shop app as well. I haven't looked at the latest statistics, but the Shop app has a lot of friggin' users. It's essentially become another marketplace to get your products in front of your perfect customers. And you can be sure Shopify will continue to invest in the growth of the Shop app because they're even rolling out new ways to advertise on the app. When a customer pays with Shop Pay, they automatically earn Shop Cash, which is 100% funded by Shopify, by the way. As a merchant, you get to target customers who have available Shop Cash. I love that the focus is on customers who have earned shop cash because it means you're able to target customers who are likely to make a purchase versus just looky-loos who love to browse. 
Shop Minis are another way you can market your business on the Shop app. I think they did initially announce this over the summer as well, but it looks like there are more apps now available for you. So these are apps created specifically for the Shop app that let you do things like create shoppable videos and even create a product recommendations quiz. And Shopify is also upgrading the Shop Pay product. In addition to showing installment payments right on the product page to make it easier for customers, they are also rolling out Shop Pay to non-Shopify stores. This is a really exciting development because it means more trust and recognition with online consumers. It's about to be at Klarna and Afterpay status, which should even trickle back to the Shop app and Shop Cash. Pretty cool. Another Shopify app update is Shopify Collabs. I wonder how many times I have said Shopify in this episode. This is the app that lets you connect with content creators. In addition to new filter and search options to find creators, they're also giving you the ability to adjust commission payouts based on Shopify's customer segmentation tool. This is a great way to reward your best partners and create deeper relationships with them. Additionally, all creator commissions will now be paid out automatically through Shopify billing. They announced this through email a while ago, so I'm not sure if they're just reiterating it or if this is like the official rollout, it's happening now. Either way, if you're using Collabs, I would pay close attention to how they adjust your funds as it could create a bit more bookkeeping complexity. If you've hired that out, you probably don't have to worry about it, but if you're doing it on your own, it's just something to be aware of. For my own affiliate payouts, like I have those set to pull directly from my bank account versus deducting from my PayPal balance because it's just easier for me to track. But I don't really have any insight into how Shopify is going to process those transactions. So just keep your eyes out. There were a couple of other Shopify specific app updates. Shopify Flow has a new run code action. You are probably not going to use that a ton yourself, but it will come in handy for developers. And there's also a failed workflow notification, so you can get an email if something isn't working as expected. Shopify Magic, their AI tool, now offers in Shopify image editing, things like removing and adding backgrounds. And there's a bunch of other little updates. Don't forget to check the show notes for links. So not a Shopify app, but another exciting announcement is the official release of the FAIR wholesale app. This has technically been available for a while, but you had to ask FAIR directly to get access. It seems like it was quietly released in the App Store a few months ago because I saw reviews in there, but it was fully launched and announced at the Shopify Editions event. If you're selling on FAIR, Having the app means you can sync your products and fulfill fair orders right from your Shopify admin. I personally haven't used it, so I don't know what the interface is like, but my hope is that you can use meta fields to sync over custom info versus just your existing customer facing descriptions. I also saw a review in the app store that said on the initial sync, it duplicated her products. Now, again, I don't know what the process looks like. This very well could have been user error. Just make sure, take time, like do a little research and confirm the right way to connect it. But in the long term, I'm sure it will streamline your operations and fulfillment for wholesale. And that brings us to our final group of updates, operations and fulfillment. While most of these are relatively small updates compared to the majority of what they announced, they're the most impactful in terms of running the day-to-day operations of your biz. The one I'm most excited about is that all Shopify reports are now available on all plans. In the past, report access was tiered along with their pricing structure, which was super annoying, but that is no longer the case. If you're on the lowest Shopify plan, I would just take some time Peruse your report options as there's probably some new ones and some new data that you can geek out on. Shopify has also released native exchanges and the ability to edit unfulfilled orders. So this is a great option if a customer chooses the wrong shipping method at checkout or maybe they forgot to apply a discount code. As long as their order hasn't been marked fulfilled, you'll be able to make those edits right from your Shopify admin. 
And you also get access to two new shipping options as part of Shopify shipping. UPS Ground Saver, which is where USPS does the last mile delivery, and USPS Ground Advantage. Depending upon your shipping settings, you may have to turn these on as options before they'll show up on the front end of your store. When you're setting up Shopify shipping, there is a setting that says automatically add new shipping options. If you have that turned on, it's probably already visible, but if you don't, you'll have to go and turn them on. Did you follow that? They've also added always on address validation at checkout. And if you're using Shopify shipping, they'll even recommend the best shipping option based on the individual order. So you know which shipping option to choose. Another shipping announcement they made was in regard to carbon neutral shipping with the Planet app. Using the Planet app essentially just collects a small fee for each transaction, which funds CO2 removal operations to create carbon neutral shipping. If I'm understanding the update properly, the app now gives you the option to collect directly from the customer as well, ultimately sending more funding to Shopify CO2 removal partners. Truth be told, by the time I got to this announcement, my brain was starting to melt and I wanted to get this episode out to you on my next publishing day. So I didn't go super deep into it. If this is important to you and your brand, I recommend you do some additional research. And of course, I'll stick links in the show notes. All right, friends, stick with me. We're almost there. There were also several updates for Shopify POS, but the one that I'm most excited about is that in-store orders can be completed online and the store will get the credit for the sale. As someone who spent years working in retail stores, I know how important it is to give credit where credit is due. This is great if you have brick and mortar stores, but maybe you're out of a particular size in your store, but it's available somewhere else. Now the in-person associate can create a cart, send the customer a link, they complete their purchase on the website, but the initial referring store, and if I read this properly, the associate who rang them up will get credit for the sale. This can also come in handy when exhibiting at in-person markets. Whether you don't have enough inventory in person or you just can't bring your entire collection, you can still make it super easy for the customer to buy the exact item they want from your store but your POS will still get credit, so you know that that sale came from an in-person event. Shopify is also making it easier than ever to automatically set aside sales tax you collect through Shopify payments in a dedicated balance bank account, and they've introduced rewards for balance accounts. I'm not sure if this would count for a tax-specific account, but you'll essentially earn some interest on the money you keep in that account. They didn't say how much. I imagine it's not a lot, but hey, it's free money. And if you don't know what Shopify Balance is, that is their bank accounts that they offer to their merchants. They're completely free. The last update I want to touch on is creating 3D models of your product right in the Shopify app. Before you get too excited though, there are some limitations on this at the moment. This can only be done with an iOS Pro device on the iOS 17 operating system. So they were very specific to say Pro, like it was written multiple times. My iPhone is not a Pro version because my hands are small. My husband has a Pro, so I could probably do it on there. All that said, Investing in an iOS Pro device is probably less expensive than outsourcing getting 3D models of your product. So if this would make a really big difference for your customers, you could just go out and buy the phone. Admittedly, I didn't take the time to test this out. If I had my own Pro, I would do it, but then I have to like go install the Shopify app on Mike's phone and all of that. So I didn't go through that whole process, but maybe you got a friend, you can kind of test it out, see how it goes. If I ever get around to doing that, I will update you guys. But again, 3D modeling, I feel like a few years ago, it was a huge craze. Maybe that was just because I was working at an e-commerce company and we were talking about internally. So it just felt like it was being talked about everywhere. I don't know if the interest sort of waned off or if I'm just out of the loop a little bit on it. 
But I do think like as a customer, it's super helpful to be able to spin a product around and really get a sense of what the product looks like from all angles. So if you think that that could make a difference for you, go buy an iOS Pro device, you write it off as a business expense, and you can start creating your own. Now, of course, the updates we went through today were just a sampling of everything they announced. Make sure you check the show notes for links to all of the updates and to dive deeper into what we discussed today. There are some video walkthroughs and documentation straight from Shopify for those updates that are rolling out in the future. Remember, it could be months or a year before they're available. So if there's something you've been waiting on that can be solved with another tool, I wouldn't necessarily sit around and wait for the Shopify version to be released, especially if it will positively affect your business financially, because you can always switch later. So don't sit around waiting for Shopify. Just go make some moves now because you can make a big difference in your business in a year. You know what I'm saying? All right, friends. That's a wrap on another episode of the e-commerce badass three podcast. I hope this walkthrough was super helpful for you. I know it is so much content. They announce so many things. It's not relevant to everyone. It's overwhelming for me to go through it all. So I'm sure it's overwhelming for you. Again, hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you on the flip side, friend. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you're ready to get the support you deserve and step into your badassery as the CEO of your e-commerce business, then I'd love to support you. Start with the free resource library at ecommercebadassery.com forward slash free stuff and get an invite to the lounge, my e-commerce marketing membership. You'll learn how to cut your to-do list and supercharge your success with ads that don't cost a fortune. If you're ready for more high touch support, apply to work with me one-on-one at ecommercebadassery.com forward slash apply. Before you go, would you do me a quick favor? Leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this podcast so other e-commerce business owners know this is the place to be and tap that follow button following the show means you'll never miss an episode and it's what pushes me up the charts to get in front of more scrappy entrepreneurs just like you i'm on a mission to support as many small business owners as possible and i could really use your help thanks again for listening until next time e-commerce friend stay badass